Bula Vinaka, my name is Letia and I'm from the beautiful island of Laos and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. My name is Casey, I'm from Tavua. We love Today FM in Tavua. Today FM rocks. My name is Selina, I'm from Tavenga Vengamba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, my name is Carlo. I love listening to the music in Today FM in Malak Ellen. Today FM rock. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, wet weather did not dampen the spirit of Diwali. Police investigate explicit videos on social media. And PM calls on the public to strengthen bonds during Diwali. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Smith. The one-week preparation for Diwali has finally come to an end and the celebration begins. Most families say that Diwali is not only the victory of light over darkness, good over evil, but also a night of fireworks, fun and sharing sweets. Anna Ravulo, who visited some families today, filed this report. Decorating homes, temples, housetops and windows with lights is not an easy task when preparing for Diwali. But when it comes to the day of celebration, it is all worth it. Pretty much uh, the past week or so, we've uh, started decorating our houses, uh, making sweets, uh, my mom's making sweets. And uh, yeah, just decorating our house, cleaning our compound, you know. Well, Diwali, you know, it comes once in a year and uh, we make a lot of sweets. So it's uh, almost one week now, preparing for the sweets and... Uh, because one day we make all the sweets, we can't make it. Even the wet weather today did not dampen the spirit of Diwali. Diwali spirit for Indians comes once in a year, so we always uh, have that Diwali spirit there, even though the weather isn't on our side. But we have that spirit there to celebrate Diwali with family and friends. Uh, prayer, 6 o'clock starts the prayer. After the prayer, we'll be lightening the lights and it starts from the evening at 6. Firecrackers and all those things. You know? Fireworks are expected to go on till midnight tonight. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. Meanwhile, FBC News reporter Maggie Boyle is somewhere around Nausori right now, taking pictures of the many colorful lights. Maggie, tell us where you are right now and what's the atmosphere like? Good evening, Jackie, and a happy Diwali to you and all our viewers tuned in tonight. Now, we know Diwali for all that wonderful sweets and all of those fireworks, but there's also a very significant spiritual meaning to Diwali. And I'm here with Pandit Nand Kishore of Omkar in Nerera. He's going to explain a little bit more about what the spiritual significance is of this wonderful festive season. Pandit? Yeah, this is a... Uh plenty of reason to celebrate Diwali but mostly the people knows about the Diwali our God we call we say Prabhu Sri Ramchandra we, we, when he re returned from uh, uh, Sri Lanka and he destroyed all the devils and uh, brought uh, his wife from uh, the devil Ravan and in Avedya when he came back they celebrate a big amount of Diwali and this is the same same day uh, when Mahalakshmi Mahalakshmi Pujan we say we uh, celebrate Diwali we did the uh, all the God uh, did the prayer to her this the time that's this why is, celebrate Diwali this is also a time of the triumph of good over evil tell me about what it is you say about it's like starting over again. if you do this kind of uh, prayer and uh, celebrate like uh, Diwali Diwali is a festival when all the devils, if it's near, they will be go go away, and plenty of devils is inside the human bodies inside. Eh? So you have to finish all the problems, of all the hurts, any kind of problems you've got. You have to finish it and meet the people happily, love all the people, and uh, give them the sweets and talk uh, sweetly for ne next all of the year, because this is the new year for uh, all the Hindu. Thank you, Pandit. And there you have it. It's a wonderful new year. It's time to celebrate the festivities of Diwali. And we'll be bringing you more as we go to a number of different homes in, in, in Suva area, along with Karakroy and myself. So stay with us for that, Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Maggie. In recognition of the spiritual holiday, Prime Minister of Orenge Mbaini Marama is calling on the public to strengthen our bonds as one Fijian family. In his Diwali message to the nation, Mbaini Marama said the religious holiday serves as a time for reflection and self-improvement. 
Bani Marama said Fiji as a nation is blessed with many cultures and religious traditions. He said all across the nation, Fijians are lighting candles and setting off fireworks to commemorate this important national holiday and more importantly, spending time with their families and loved ones to reflect and celebrate the joy and goodness of life. Meanwhile, President His Excellency Major General Retired Chiochi Kondrote says Fiji and all Fijians have various reasons to celebrate Diwali today. The President says whether we live in the urban or rural and remote areas, the national goal is to ensure that everyone that has equal access to the basic necessities of life. Meanwhile, opposition leader Rote Mumukepa says Diwali is about evaluating our national life, whether there is righteousness, justice and truth. Rote Mumu says there are many stories and tales related with Diwali in addition to its Vedic significance. She says like all faith-based fe festivals, Diwali has its own significance. Meanwhile, National Federation Party leader Professor Biman Prasad describes Diwali as a time for reflection, unity and message of good over evil. Professor Prasad says the religious festival also sends the message of peace and harmony and that we must... On behalf of the National Federation Party, uh, I extend to everyone uh, my very best wishes. I do hope that uh, we uh, as political leaders uh, and those who are entrusted uh, with uh, leading our people uh, will heed the message of Diwali uh, and uh, uh, move uh, in a direction that we can create unity, peace, harmony, uh, and goodwill amongst our people um, uh, at all times. Police Commissioner Brigadier General Siti Venengilio has given his warmest Diwali greetings to all Fijians, saying it's important not to forget the true essence of the Festival of Lights. The Commissioner also reminded all Fijians to make this Diwali crime-free and enjoy the firecrackers, sweets and lights. Gilio has also issued a stern warning to those that may be looking to cause trouble tonight. He adds that they will not hesitate to take action and will come down hard on these people is a time uh, where our Hindu brothers and sisters uh, reflect on goodness over evil, of light over darkness. Police are currently investigating an explicit video of two students that were involved in graphic sexual activity, which has gone viral on social media. Spokesperson Ananai Soro confirms to FBC News that the cybercrime unit is working to gather information about those that are sharing the video. Naisoro adds they are working to establish the age of the students. She adds the person who is responsible for uploading the video can be charged for defilement and trafficking. Naisoro is also urging members of the public to avoid sharing the video. Police are pleading to the public to call Crime Stoppers on 919 if they have any information regarding the video. She adds information received by the public will greatly help them in tracking down the person who uploaded the video on social media. It's clearly, it's a clear cut uh, um, indication because of the fact that it was uploaded without the two's consent. And you know, that's a crime in itself. And also in the fact that they are students, we have to uh, ascertain the, the age of the, the girl because that could also be a case of defilement. Still to come, gender issues to be one of the top priorities during COP23 and tempering of goods expiry dates a concern for consumer councils. Stay with us. Number two in a serre. We are the Ratu Bunikurna Billy, Borani Batskara and Barabin Arna, the Taltakina Baron and Bula FM, number two in a serre. Bula Bula FM, number two in a serre. Prime Minister of Orenge Mbaini Marama has assured that throughout the term of Fiji's COP23 presidency, gender issues will get the priority it deserves. Mbaini Marama was speaking at the Gender Diplomacy Breakfast in Denarau yesterday. Eleanor Turanga View reports. Women and girls are both critically vulnerable to some of the worst effects of climate change. Prime Minister and the incoming COP23 President Vorenge Mbani Marama has assured that gender equality will also take the platform at COP23. We go into COP23 committing ourselves to the principles of justice and equality 
in which women and girls are afforded the same opportunities as men and boys. We cannot be proud that the adoption of the first gender action plan will take place at COP23. Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat Secretary General De Mag Taylor commended Fiji for making gender one of the top five priorities for COP23. As the region prepares for COP23 to be held in Bonn next month, Pacific people will look to the region's leadership for political guidance necessary to ensure a strong representation of the Pacific region and of small island states at COP23. Under the Paris Agreement, when parties take action to address climate change, it should respect, promote and consider gender equality and the empowerment of women. There is compelling evidence that links the inclusion of women in climate policy and solutions with better results, economic growth and more sustainable outcomes. The Australian government showed its commitment to increasing the influence of women in driving solutions to climate change. Today I am pleased to announce an ongoing commitment of $1.5 million over four years to support further meaningful participation of Pacific women in climate-related decision-making. Almost half of Fiji's delegation to the COP23 in Germany are women. Eleanor Turangiviu, FBC News. The Fiji Bus Operators Association admits they expected some issues with the rollout of the e-ticketing system on the 1st of October. FBOA President Richard Lal says stakeholders met on Friday last week to iron out issues and sort out what needs to be done to ensure a smoother transition to the e-ticketing system across the country. Maggie Boyle tells us more. While it's been an adjustment for commuters, bus companies too have had their fair share of challenges. Wrong cards in wrong hands, money loading up in our school children at this point of time. That is being sorted out at this stage. Uh, I think um, people uh, using children's car, therefore, for instance, to pay bus fares. Children using their money by having joy rides and not having money on the car to go to school. There are some of the some of the challenges we are having. Lal says the issues are being worked out. All the stakeholders we got together on Friday and we've kind of identified what issues need to be sorted out by whom, and it's all a work in progress. Meanwhile, General Secretary for the Transport Workers Union, Kamlesh Kumar, says better conditions for bus drivers is high on their agenda. We as a union, this union, we don't talk strike. And we believe in dialogue and effective communication with the employers. More than 417,000 e-cards are currently in use, according to the FBOA, despite more than 600,000 being registered. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Awareness of sexual offences needs to be strengthened and discussed openly in schools. This was highlighted by Fiji Women's Crisis Centre coordinator Shamima Ali after a Year 9 student of an Alsori Bay school was allegedly has alleged to have been raped by three senior students from the same school. Savara Tambo reports two of the students involved are in Year 12, while the other one is in Year 13. Three students of an Osori Bay School are in custody after being remanded in court charged in the alleged rape of a Year 9 student from the same school. FWCC coordinator Shamima Ali believes one of the contributing factors to such instances occur when children are not advised openly about sexual offences and how to respect the opposite sex. For us to prevent these things, schools have to be more open and people like us coming in to work with their boys, to work with their girls, to have conversations around these things where boys and girls can sit together and talk to each other, focus group discussions and so on. National Substance Abuse and Advisory Council Chief Executive Manuel Senikarawa says home is the first place to learn the impacts of such criminal activity. Already they're in the classroom, but uh, parents need to be proactive and tell their kids that uh, this is not wrong. This is not, we're not supposed to be doing this, especially uh, when, we, when we have sons. The FWCC will this week release their latest report on sexual offences. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. The alteration of expiry dates by retail shops is a major issue identified by the Consumer Council of Fiji whilst undertaking Diwali inspections. Chief Executive Pramila Kumar says that they will not take this matter lightly. Sainan Imboila reports. Expiry dates play a major role in the usage of products by consumers and the Consumer Council will not tolerate traders who tamper with these dates. 
This is another big problem in this country, where some of the supermarkets, they temper with the expiry dates, and they try and erase or hide or put a new sticker on it. And this is unacceptable. Kumar adds that consumers should be vigilant when buying products not only during Diwali, but other festivities as well. Meanwhile, the Competition and Consumer Commission has not received any complaints on this issue so far. As far as now is concerned, we have yet to receive any consumer complaint as such. But the inspections are still going on. However, if, if there is a consumer complaint with regards to the public saying anywhere in Fiji, uh, our officers will be ready to intervene and attend. The Consumer Council has so far received 51 complaints during the Diwali period. Sanya Nimboila, ABC News. In sports after the break, police dominates in Sukuna Bowl boxing. And Fiji and Roa wary of Queensland country. This and more coming up. I'm another sort of of Nayabu when Telebu. Whenever I want to tune in to listen to great music, I always tune in to my favorite radio station, Gold FM, only the classic. My name is Lita. We love listening to Gold FM here at the Fiji Hideaway Resort and Spa. Gold FM, only the classic hits. We here at Tano Waterfront Lotoka love listening to Gold FM, only, only the, the classic, classic hits. hits. Gold FM, only the classic The Fiji Airways draw must beat Queensland country to keep their hopes alive of being in the top four. As Meli Tavanga reports, the Fijian side are expecting a tough battle against Queensland country come game day this Saturday. Fiji draw coach Sinirusi Silva Kula says they need to get their set pieces right and maintain the trust within the team in order to counter the opposition. According to the rule and uh, and uh, maintain discipline for the full 80 minutes and uh, we have to be very smart uh, going into playing against this uh, this team in, in this competition. Serovakula says they are expecting a crucial match as Queensland country is also fighting for a place in the semi-finals. Queensland country is uh, they're a good team, they're a good team and uh, uh, they've, uh, there's a lot of uh, Reds playing in the, in the, in the team and uh, it's going to be tough, it's going to be tough uh, playing against them. Maintaining discipline and defense are areas the Fijian side is trying to amend before game day. A few times uh, discipline has let us down and defense as well. But we coming to the end, business end of the competition, we'll try and keep on improving on that. Fiji born winger Eton Bully and former Warden Sevens player Filippo Dongunu are expected to feature for the country this week. The Fijian draw will host Queensland country at 2 p.m. at Lotokas Churchill Park. FBC Sports. Police prop Dan Lingairi will create history when he makes his 11th appearance for the Blues in the ANZ Ratasukuna Bowl Challenge tomorrow. This is the most number of games played by any police player in Sukuna Bowl history as they aim to defend their title. Lingairi becomes the only officer to play in 11 consecutive Sukuna Bowl challenges. He made his debut in the police side in 2007. The Police Service 1 defended the Sukuna Bowl netball title after defeating Army Service 1 40-30 in a tough final this afternoon. The Army side took the lead in the first quarter, leading by 16-14. to The Blues regrouped in the last three quarters and came out victorious. Meanwhile, Army Service Men 1 beat Police in three straight sets to win the Sukuna Bowl volleyball title. Queensland Reds have bolstered their outside backstocks with the signing of the National Rugby Championship's leading try scorer, Filippo Ndangunu. Ndangunu is a former Fijian football youth international who has scored 10 tries this season for Queensland country. The 22-year-old played as a goalkeeper in the round ball game but gave it up in 2015 to pursue a career in rugby and has also spent time in Fiji's sevens program. Meanwhile, he will be abroad for the country side, which takes on the Fijian draw in Lautoka on Saturday. And the police team dominated in the ring in the Sukuna Bowl boxing tournament, which ended last night in Nasova. The team, led by National Rep Viliame Vituka Lulu, scooped five out of seven gold medals over Army. Meli Tavanga reports. Discipline and sacrifice are the keys behind their outstanding performance last night. As you all know that this is the discipline force. The secret is the discipline of the police. Time to sleep, have to sleep. 
have to eat the right diet. They have to discipline yourself, both in and out of the ring. Vitukululu, who won the super heavyweight title, says it was a tough competition compared to last year. It was really tough. You've got some of the ref from the military. You go in as a defending champion, but at the end of the day, one is going to win, one is going to lose. Meanwhile, heavyweight gold medalist Jody Mao says his hard work finally paid off. I've been preparing well for this tournament. After I beat Lingalaw on Tuesday, that gave me confidence and enabled me to keep pushing and win the gold medal. Zohab Ali from police won the 60 kg, Vili Modi Drotini won the 69 kg division, while in the 75 kg category, Vili Abi Rokobuli took it out for police and new Abi rap Tina Ruata won the light heavyweight title beating Ali Pate Tawakilai of police in the final. Vili Tabaga, FBC Sports. The Fiji Table Tennis Federation hopes the weather will be in their favor when they host the 2017 International Table Tennis World Cadet Challenge next week. The Federation is working closely with the Fiji Sports Council to ensure that there's no obstacle to ruin the tournament. Meli Tavanga reports. Roof leakage was always a problem when it rains at the Vodafone Arena, but the tournament organizers are working tirelessly to avoid the issue. Our main concern is basically the, the leakage from the roof. Uh, hopefully that should and hopefully the weather stays on uh, for that um, for that period where there's going to be no rain. Despite these horses, they're ensuring a safe and a better tournament. We've got a lot of um, investment at stake here, not just from us, but from all our suppliers. Um, you know, we've got a, a ton of lights coming in from Australia. Uh, that's going to put on a really good show for us uh, for this event. Meanwhile, 15-year-old Tulimano Jack Muller is ready to fly Fiji's better at the area the next week. To be playing like other country, like to be part of the team, like from Fiji, so I can have some level like going up. The event is a record center for Fiji sports with players, managers and technical officials from over 40 countries attending which looks like being the most diverse sporting event to take place in Fiji's history. Melitavanga, FBC Sports. Showers were experienced over the southern and eastern parts and the interior of the larger islands. Generally, fine weather prevailed elsewhere. Looking at the west, it was cloudy day for most areas with a bit of sunshine. Eastwards from Pack Harbour to Suva, sunny spells in the morning with cloudy conditions in Suva. And up north, it was also a cloudy day, but with temperatures hitting 30s in the afternoon. At sea, moderate easterly winds, fresh and gusty at times, moderate to rough seas. Tides, high tide tomorrow morning will be at 6.58 with low tide at 12.47 in the afternoon. Sunrise will be at 5.34 and for tomorrow it's cloudy with some showers over the southern and eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. Elsewhere it's fine apart from isolated afternoon or evening showers and possible thunderstorms. And looking further on to Saturday, it's showers and thunderstorms to be expected. Recapping the main stories, wet weather did not dampen the spirit of Diwali. Police investigate explicit videos on social media and PM calls on the public to strengthen bonds during Diwali. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question this week, we are asking, do you think fireworks are too expensive this year? Visit our FBC website to answer. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. And that was the FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable Diwali. Bye for now. Mirchi FM, it's so hot. Mirchi FM, it's hot.